Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is video two of Getting Started with Classes. Now, in the last video, we actually snuck in two concepts, importing and extending. And in this video, we'll explain what importing means, and in the upcoming video, we'll go over extending. So, um, what we're going to do here is basically uh, add some properties and methods and run those, teach you what dot syntax is, and something that's very interesting called reverse domain syntax. So let's get to it. First thing we're going to do is add properties and methods and you're probably asking well, what's a property, what's a method? Those are real fancy names for variables and functions. So in a class a variable is called a property and a function is called a method. Okay so here's some code right here. We're just going to pop it right into Flash and we're going to uh, play around with it and explain what it means. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this from the notes, open up Flash and go through it. So I have Flash open, and now I'm going to go ahead and paste in uh, my code. So I paste that in, and I have problems with these uh, quotes, so let's go ahead and take those out and just retype those. So basically, we have the constructor package and then the class statement. And within the class statement, we have the decoration of the property. And that's pretty much just a variable with the name public put in front of it. Now, public defines the scope of the variable. So if it's public, you can access it from other programs. If it's private, you can only access it within the package. Now, that's very important because typically it's bad practice to have a public variable. Now, sometimes you do and you want that. But for the majority of variables, you don't want them to be, be able to be accessed by other programs. You actually want your methods to access those private variables and then use those for other processes. Uh, so that's where your uh, property is. Now, your method is defined right after your constructor function right here. And it's a very simple method. All we're going to do is uh, have a public function. We're going to call it simple method. We return void. And we're just going to run a trace statement, basically printing out the simple prop. Now notice there's a difference between the constructor method and a regular method. Basically, though methods will follow the constructor method, the constructor method itself does not have a return type. And finally, within the constructor method, we are declaring the simple prop property that you created in the... Uh, class statement. Now, this looks like a football game, so let's go ahead and get rid of some of these lines and arrows. Uh, it's actually fairly simple, so just if you missed that, just run the video again, and just imagine that you're in front of uh, Friday Night Football or something. So you have that now, and once we have it, we actually have to save that. So we go back up here to Flash, and we're actually going to save this. And we're, we've got to save it as the exact name, as you, re as you recall, as the class name. So let's bring that up. There we go. And so that needs to be saved as my class prop meth. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that so I don't make any mistakes. Just go file, save as. Now just going to paste that in there. We want to save it in the my class folder. And let's save it. So we're good to go. And now we want to run that. And what we're going to do that is going to create a flaw. And we're going to use dot syntax to access this property and to access this method. So let's go ahead and do that. And I want to go ahead and copy the name of this class right here because I'm going to be using that in the dot syntax. So copy that. And let's go file, and we hit new, and create an action script file. There we go. That's going to be our flaw. We want that to be in the same folder as uh, we uh, have our class. So we're going to save as. And at this point, uh, we can save this as anything. So I'm going to use the same name. Just type test on the end of it. Hit save. We're going to work with our actions here, so I'm going to bring up the actions panel. We have var. Now we can name it anything. We can instantiate it as anything. So my uh, prop meth. And then we've got that class name. I copied it in my uh, clipboard there. And we're going to use a new method to instantiate it. And let's go ahead and come along here. And uh, that's all good. And now we're going to use dot syntax. So coming along here, we're just going to grab this name that we instantiated. And I want to out put the uh, method in a trace statement, so I'll go trace, and I'll paste that in there. And now that I have that, I just had to hit dot, and whatever the name of the property is, and we'll trace that property out. Open simple prop, and that will basically will uh, trace out that. And now we want to run the method, so we go my prop meth dot simple method, and we're going to run that. So what should happen? When you run this, the uh, class is instantiated or created, and that should actually run the constructor method, which just prints out uh, the little trace there. 
And then what we do here is, in the, this trace, we should trace out the, the name of the string, which is set in the constructor method, and that should be me. And we run the simple method, which just has a trace of the simple prop, we should also see me again. <laughs> let's run this, and let's see if that is indeed what happens. Control test movie. And there we go, constructor output here, that comes from the constructor method. Me and me. So, <laughs> simple, but a very important. So we got that done, let's move on to the next section. So let's briefly review what we did. Basically, we created a class and put in it properties and methods. And the name of that class was my class prop meth. And we came along here and we uh, instantiated and then we traced out its property by just using dot syntax, the name of the class instance dot whatever the name of the property was. And then what we did is we actually ran the method just by taking the name of the class instance. In this case, it was my class dot simple method. So that ran really well. And so that's how you use, use dot syntax, and it's pretty easy. But now here's a really important um, concept, and that's using reverse domain syntax. You don't want to always run your class packages where your flaw is, because you may have, in a sense, hundreds of class packages. And what happens is if some of them are named the same, or maybe they conflict with other names of classes and packages that other people have created, you're going to have a mess. So you want a way, in a sense, to put them in other folders underneath and a string, uh, in a sense, a path to them that's unique to every other class package that you're using in your program. So many people basically might have a domain name out there. And for example, I might have uh, uh, lively3d, for example, dot org. And I use reverse syntax notation. So I'll just come along here and go org.lively.3d. That's right. That's all there is to it. I mean, it's a little bit embarrassing. So you can see pretty much I just reverse and use a dot. Isn't that cool? And that's called reverse domain syntax because it's a domain name that you reverse. Hey, that's pretty easy to remember, right? But what I have to do is as I bury my package in that folder structure, so I'm going to create a folder structure. The first folder will be org. The next will be lively3d. I have to also change the package name. So it's not just enough to write that. It needs to know where the package is. And basically, you just take org.lively3d and you put it in front of your package. Let's go ahead and do that so you can see it happen and get rid of some of this football player looking uh, a, a scribbling that I'm doing on this. So what I want to do first is create the folder structure that I'm going to put my class in. So I come along here and go open that up. And I first want to just right click and create a new folder. And we'll call that folder org. And I'll open that up and I'll right click and create a folder called lively3d. And then I'll put my class into that folder. Well, I'll make sure I put the extension org.lively3d in that package name. So let's do that right now. We'll come along here and go back to the notes. And see the extension is already there. We're going to copy that and we're going to actually going to run that. So I'm going to copy that. Uh, let's bring up Flash again. Let's create a new action script package or new action script file. There you go. We'll just paste it right in there. I'm going to bring this down so you can see that. And we're all ready to go. We just need to save that in the right place. It has to be saved as this name. I call it my class RDS syntax, which means re reverse domain syntax. So let's go back up to the save function. I'm going to copy this and put this in the clipboard so I have it. Let's go up. And you just go File, Save As. And now you got to navigate that folder structure. So let's open that up org lively okay and open that up and go ahead and save it there and now you've saved your package in that and let's go ahead and see that let's go right to that open that up and there's the package it's called script 4 I don't like that that's not saved as the right name let's go ahead and rename that remember it's got to be the same name as the class or it will not run so there you go that's the correct name we're ready to rock and roll we're just going to create a flaw and we're going to instantiate it and watch it run. So let's go ahead and do that. Go File New. And now we're just creating a flaw. And you can call this flaw anything you want. Okay. We're going to go to Actions. And we're going to go to Var. And now we have a problem. We have no idea where that class is. So in order to uh, tell Flash where the class is, you have to use the import statement. You've got to import it. And you're going to org dot lively 3d and the name of the class and so what you've done now you've told flash 
where it is and it can import the class so it can work with it. Now if it's in the same file as the fly, it automatically does that. But if it's not, you've got to tell it where it is and we've just done that. So now we just go var and we'll call this um, my RDS. And you have to use that class name of course, just like you've done before. We're going to equal new and let's use that class again with parenthesis. And when we run this, the constructor method should run and the trace should pop out just giving us a small trace telling us that the constructor method has run. Let's go ahead and save this. And this can be saved basically in the in the folder away from the class. So we're going to save actually we're going to save that. Just in the class folder, and you can call it anything you want. My RDS test. And just save that. And now let's run it. And that's beautiful. I mean it pulls a class from the uh reverse domain structures uh folder structure and it runs a constructor method. Beautiful. You're going to use this over and over again. So get used to reverse domain syntax.